My name is Keith Matheny and I'm a private practice otolaryngologist in Dallas. My areas of interest include rhinology and sleep. Today I'll be discussing an in-office case of a patient with a long history of chronic sinusitis without polyposis and allergic rhinitis. This is a 58-year-old gentleman who has been maximally medically managed for many years with daily allergy medication, a full course of immunotherapy, and antibiotics as frequently as five to six times per year. He also typically requires three to four courses of oral steroids per year for his chronic sinusitis. During each episode, in addition to nasal obstruction, the patient frequently experiences facial pain and pressure, periorbital headaches, changes to his taste and smell, and purulent nasal drainage. The decision was made to undergo a total ethmoidectomy bilaterally with concurrent balloon catheter dilation of the frontal and maxillary sinus outflow tracts in an ambulatory surgery setting. Unfortunately, the patient did not have access to Propel in this particular ambulatory surgery center. However, the patient was a candidate for Propel placement in the office. As you can see, the ethmoidectomy went routinely and there was a minimal amount of oozing at the end of the case. I chose to dress each ethmoid cavity with a chitosin-based dissolvable dressing for its antimicrobial and hemostatic properties. This dressing typically dissolves within four days. This is the appearance of each ethmoid cavity at one week postoperatively. Of note, middle turbinates were lateralized, but were easily mobilized back medially with a freer elevator. A limited amount of suctioning was also necessary to optimize the ethmoid cavities. Here you can see me placing the Propel implant into each ethmoid cavity during this postoperative visit without difficulty. The ethmoid cavities were anesthetized with the typical tetracaine gel that we would use for most office procedures. I am assuring good mucosal contact of all aspects of each implant. Here is the appearance of the implant at one week after placement, which is two weeks postoperatively. Of note, the implants placed in the office at a distinct time point separate from surgery are extremely clean without oozing from the acute ethmoidectomy. This gives me great confidence that the maximum amount of mometazone furoate is being delivered to the mucosal surface. This is the appearance at four weeks postoperatively and again noted is the cleanliness of the implants. The nasal mucosa has returned to its normal color and thickness with resolution of the chronic inflammation. No synechiae were identified and the middle turbinates are in optimal position. Finally, here is the appearance of the patient's ethmoid cavities at three months postoperatively. I am very pleased with the dual action of the Propel implants. The middle turbinates are in optimal position due to the stenting action of the implant, while the ethmoid mucosa has returned back to its healthy normal state due to the localized drug delivery aspect. Because of the sinus surgery with Propel, the patient subjectively is experiencing an improvement in daytime nasal breathing as well as subjective improvements in his sleep quality and taste and smell. The feasibility and tolerability of placement of the Propel implants in the office at a time distinct from sinus surgery after hemostasis had been established were further assessed in a prospective case series published in late 2014. 20 patients were evaluated, some with pre-existing nasal polyposis and some without. Some of the patients also had undergone prior sinus surgery. Inherently, the series required deployment of the implants into the ethmoid sinus cavities under local anesthesia in an awake patient in the office. The study assessed the patient experience with the in-office procedure, as well as the objective outcomes. This case series demonstrated the use of Propel during the postoperative healing period in the office setting, as opposed to being placed immediately perioperatively. For more information on this study, please reference the article, Safety, Feasibility, and Efficacy of Placement of Steroid-Eluting Bioabsorbable Sinus Implants in the Office Setting, a Prospective Case Series, which was published in the International Forum of Allergy and Rhinology.